Welcome everyone to God's Daily Dose, where we're coming together for a daily dose of God's Word. For those who don't know me, my name is Billy Joe Summers. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm an outreach ministry leader here at Come and See Friends Church, and we are located at 916 8th Avenue North in Texas City, Texas. Join me today. We're going to pick up in 2 Samuel. I'm going to read chapter 7 and 8, but just a quick recap from chapter 6. Um, the Ark of the Covenant has returned to Jerusalem. David had brought it back in the process. He lost uh, Uzziah, who had, who had touched the, the Ark um, and was struck, struck dead by God um, for his disobedience. And so um, we're going to pick up in chapter 7, if you'll follow along with me, please. Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all of your enemies from before you, and have made you a great name, like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more as previously, since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also, the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits in inequity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this was a small thing in your sight, O Lord God. And you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. Is this the manner, O man, O Lord God? Now what more can David say to you? For the Lord God know your servant. For your word's sake and according to your own heart, you have done all these great things to make your servant know them. Therefore, you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, nor is there any God beside you, according to all that we have heard for, with our ears. And who is like your people, like Israel, the one nation on the earth, whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, to make for himself a name? And to do for yourself great and awesome deeds for your land before your people whom you redeemed for yourself from Egypt, the nations and their gods. For you have made your people Israel your very own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Now, O Lord God, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, 
establish it forever and do as you have said. So let your name be magnified forever, saying the Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found in his heart to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God and your words are true. And you have promised this goodness to your servant. Now, therefore, let it please you to bless the house of your servant that it may continue before you forever. For you, O Lord God, have spoken it. And with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. Chapter 8. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Metheg Ammah from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab, forcing them down to the ground. He measured them off with a line. With two lines, he measured off those to be put to death, and with one full line, those to be kept alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his territory at the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,000 chariots, 700 horsemen, and 20,000 foot soldiers. Also, David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough, for, enough of them for 100 chariots. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hedadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought tribute to the Lord. So the Lord preserved David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold that he had belonged to the servant of Hedadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Batal and from Barothea, city of Hebadezer, King David took a large amount of bronze. When Toy, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hedadezer, then Toy sent Jeram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him, because he had fought against Hedadezer and defeated him, for Hedadezer had been at war with Toy. And Jerome brought with him articles of silver, articles of gold, and articles of bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord, along with the silver and gold that he had dedicated from all of the nations which he had subdued, from Syria, from Moab, from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, from Amalek, and from the spoil of Hedadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. And David made himself a name when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. So David reigned over all of Israel, and David administered judgment and justice to all his people. Joab, the son of Zuriah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud was recorder, Zadok the son of Ahidab, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar were the priests, Seraiah was the scribe, Benaiah the son of Jehoda was over both the, the Cherethites and the Bethelites, and David's sons were chief ministers, amen. It's a lot of names. Amen. All right. So that's the end of chapter 8. So if we reflect back on chapter 7, um, God's covenant with David, um, we see, you know, David just really, he wanted to please God, thinking that by building a house um, for God, that that would be pleasing to God. But he was told no. And so what did he do in, the, in, in response to that? He submitted to God's will, he listened to God's word, and he gave himself to worship. And so we can present ourselves with that question, how would we respond 
if God said no to one of our greatest ambitions and something that we thought would please him, have we asked the, uh, that question when he's told us no? How have we responded? I'm sure at some point he's given us a, a no for an answer, you know. So um, share it with us if you don't mind. Leave us a comment. Um, in chapter 8, we see uh, David further continued his conquest. and um, But we see once he was submitted to God, he's exalted. His name is exalted throughout uh chapter 8 he's exalted um his name and his god's exalting his kingdom amen um and he's had victory after victory um throughout his conquest but you know we're oftentimes when we exalt ourselves god will humble us right but when, when we humble ourselves god will exalt us and that's what's happened here in chapter 8 so Today's daily reminder, you know, let's fully rely on God each and every day. Submit ourselves to God and have faith and trust in Jesus. We want to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And we want to be in the word daily, but we don't want to just know it. We want to live it, love it, and obey it. And we want to pray always and about everything. So I want to encourage y'all to come out Monday through Friday for God's daily dose at noon. And then we have 6.30 in the evening, Monday through Friday. We have Bible study, uh, Celebrate Recovery on Tuesdays. On Wednesday, we have uh, prayer. And then on Friday, we have family game night. And then Saturdays, we just launched our youth program, uh, Celebrate Recovery for students called the, or for teens, called The Landing. So we hope to see y'all out. Bring the youth. Come see what God is doing. He's doing so many amazing things in our community. And um, we just want to spread the word and give the good news, you know, that Jesus Christ gives us salvation. He gives us forgiveness of sins. Um, and we just want to continue to spread that, the, the gospel to everyone. So we hope to see y'all out. Y'all have a blessed day. And we'll see y'all soon um, for chapter 9 and chapter 10.